One of the best things you can do to keep your family safe from EMF is to turn off the Wi-Fi. I know that the thought of it feels a little bit like losing an arm, but remember, the benefits far outweigh the convenience here. Yeah, so always go with a wired ethernet connection for anything that has the option and then turn off the Wi-Fi in each of those devices. So gaming consoles, printers, Roku's, smart TVs, your PC. And you're not only gonna just cut out a bunch of EMF from your life, but you have the more reliable, secure, faster wired internet. Yeah, so today in this DIY guide, you'll find out how to turn the Wi-Fi off and get the solution that's going to work best for putting a wired internet connection in your home. Here's the steps to turn off Wi-Fi. Whether or not your home is already wired with ethernet cables, your first step is to look at your modem and router, and sometimes it's an all-in-one, to make sure you have the option to turn off wireless internet. Here are the two most common setups. So for setup number one, it's the all-in-one. The modem, router, and some more things are all in this one device. And typically if you're leasing from an internet provider, it's likely that you have one like this. So here on the left, you'll notice that the back panel has options for ethernet, USB, VoIP, which is voice over internet phone, to go along with the Wi-Fi. And the second setup you'll see is a separate modem and router. In this setup, the internet connection goes from the modem and into the router to broadcast the Wi-Fi signal. For setup number one, this is how you turn off the Wi-Fi for an all-in-one router. Go search online how to turn off Wi-Fi on, insert your internet provider or router brand model here, then router, and then just follow the steps. They'll usually come up right away. And you'll probably find instructions similar to these that I found when I searched for our all-in-one router using the search term, how to turn off Wi-Fi on Xfinity router. So first connect to your router via like a wired internet connection and then open up your web browser like Chrome or Firefox and enter in the router's IP address. This is just a string of numbers that puts you at the front door to enter into your all-in-one router. It's also in the, uh, the owner's manual typically. And sometimes it's actually on the router itself if you look at it. And then you just enter the name and password on the login page and it's usually found in the instruction manual or on the router itself, unless you've changed it and then hopefully you've written that down somewhere. If not, you can reset it. And now once you're logged in, oh, here's where you can turn all the settings on and off, including the Wi-Fi. Yeah, and so in this Xfinity router, you just navigate gateway, Wi-Fi, edit for both the 2.4 gigahertz and the five gigahertz Wi-Fi. They're just two different signals the Wi-Fi goes on and you need to disable both of those. And you'll know it's successful when the Wi-Fi lights on the front of the router turn off. And every router is a little bit different and has a different IP address, so be sure to follow the instructions for your specific model. Okay, for setup number two, it gets a little more straightforward if you have, uh, you have to turn the Wi-Fi off for a modem and router. So for this setup, the Wi-Fi comes from the router. So the simplest solution is to just get rid of your wireless router and get what we call a switch that is meant only for wired connections and they can be various amounts of those connections in one switch. And with that being said, be sure to buy one with enough ports for the maximum number of connections you could have at one time in your home. And a little tip, if you have a wireless router with enough ethernet ports, they usually have four or five. You can use it as long as you disable the wireless and just by following the same steps outlined in setup one, by navigating, disabling it inside of the router. So now that you know you can turn off your Wi-Fi, we need to learn how to install ethernet cables and connections in your home. And now that you're sure that you have enough internet connections for all of your devices, go ahead and turn off that Wi-Fi and let's run these ethernet cables all throughout your house. So if you've got some extra cash, the easiest way is to hire a professional, but it can be a little pricey. So if you like to DIY and save money like I do, by all means, do it yourself. It's not that hard. First, you need to decide how you're going to run the cables where they need to go. And there are four main ways of running ethernet connections. Let's find the one that's gonna work best for you in your home. This is the, so step number one is the inside wall hug. So you can seal the cable along the edges of the carpet, under mats, and just kind of run it on the inside of your house to where it needs to go. It's definitely the easiest way to go, but not always the prettiest. Next up is the outside wall hug. So you run the ethernet cables through a vent, or you could drill a hole out and run it alongside the edges of your house to where the ethernet needs to be installed in each room. If you have cable coming into your house, it's basically just the same way that they install the cable. So you could go outside, take a look. And for this option, you may want to install an actual Ethernet port inside each room. 
Now this method is one that a lot of people don't know about, but it's called a Powerline Ethernet adapter. So these are some handy adapters that you plug into your wall and you plug your internet into, and it will actually send the internet signal through the electrical wiring to another place in your home. These are a really good choice if you only have one or two connections you need to make that are far away, or if you have a really hard to reach area for running your cable. And so this option number four is the in-wall installation method. And this is what a professional would do. They would run the ethernet cable through an attic or crawl space, drop it up or down the wall into the each room that needs a connection. It's by far the best long-term solution, but it's also the most work. Because it means drilling through floors and ceilings, crawling around in places that can get really hot or really cold. So, you know, just if you're up for it. And then if you check down in the description, uh, I'll, put, I'll put a link to a video that shows how to do this. It's really not too hard, but it does take a little work. So once you decide how you're gonna run the cable, you need to measure and then purchase the equipment. For the ethernet cables, be sure to buy some that's shielded Cat6, and it's a good color for what you're planning to do depending on how you're running it. And this is just a tip. Lessons learned from me. When measuring, be generous with your measurements and include any extra length running up and down walls. It's always better to be extra long than even a little too short. Once it's all done, congratulations! You're ready to turn off the Wi-Fi, connect, and go. But even when you're connected, you're probably going to find that the hardest part is to stop using your cell phone for things that you can now do on your wired devices, browsing email, videos, social media, all those things. If it helps at all, remember that your cell phone's data connection is also radiating EMF. It may not be as bad as Wi-Fi, but still, not great for you. So keep that phone away in a specific place, away from your family, a charging station, so you're not tempted to use it. And just push forward, give it, a, give it a few weeks. Before long, using wired connections will become second nature, and it's so much safer for you and your family. And even though it takes a little bit of technical skill, some planning, it's a small price to pay for protecting your family from the dangers of EMF radiation. And if for whatever reason you still need to have Wi-Fi in your home, be sure to follow these tips to cut your EMF exposure. So move the router as far away from people as possible. Distance is your friend when it comes to this EMF radiation, especially from Wi-Fi. And then you can actually put a router guard, which they also call a Faraday cage, around it to neutralize most of the EMF. And sounds simple, but turn it off at night. It's so easy to forget. So picking up an inexpensive electrical timer will do just the trick. I hope you found this information really useful. We've got more great information already on our site at emfsafefamily.com and more coming. So come join us. Just learn how to take some simple steps to protect yourself from this EMF and stuff all around us. <laughs> take care, stay safe, and enjoy your family.